human body, nervous and endocrine system. The nervous system. When a bus comes towards you, you at once become cautious and step to one side of the road. Why did your legs move on seeing a bus? This is because at the very moment your nerves become active and they transmit the signal to the brain which in turn alert your muscles to be cautious. The humans have a complex body consisting of different systems. Various activities are performed by these systems. The work of different parts of the body is coordinated by the nervous system. Nervous system is concerned with the reception of stimuli, the transmission of nerve impulses and the activation of muscles mechanism. The nervous system of humans consists of central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system. Central nervous system It includes the brain and the spinal cord. It processes and coordinates all the activities of humans. Memory, intelligence and emotions are governed here. Brain Brain is the vital and delicate part of the central nervous system. It is situated within the skull. Brain controls the vital activities for the survival of human. The brain has following three parts. Cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla oblongata. Parts of the brain Structure Functions Cerebrum Largest part of the brain it has ridges and furrows. It consists of right and left halves. Responsible for memory, thinking, intelligence, sensation of pain, touch and sight, taste, smell and hearing etc. Cerebellum Smaller, egg-shaped found at the back of the skull. Responsible for muscular action, balance of the body. Medulla oblongata. It is the base of the brain. It is a link between the brain and the spinal cord. Controls breathing, heartbeat, digestive system and other involuntary functions. Spinal cord. It is a long cord which arises from the base of the skull. It runs backward through the vertebral column and extends up to the tail and is protected by the bones of the vertebral column. Spinal cord receives impulses from the brain and sends them to the muscles and internal organs. It is also the center of many reflex actions. Peripheral nervous system It consists of nerves which arise from central nervous system that is brain and spinal cord. It is responsible for providing information to the central nervous system and carrying commands to the organs of the body. The nerves of peripheral nervous system are of two types. Cranial nerves The cranial nerves are connected to the brain by passing through openings in the skull or cranium. Cranial nerves are distributed to the head and neck regions of the body. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Spinal nerves The spinal nerves are connected with the spinal cord pass through openings in the vertebral column. Spinal nerves are distributed to various parts of the body. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Autonomic nervous system It controls the functions of the organs of the body which automatically works without person's conscious control. For example, breathing, circulatory system, digestive system and respiration etc. To carry out these, there are two systems, the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. Sympathetic system The sympathetic system is stimulated by hormone adrenaline. This nervous system helps the body to adjust in abnormal environmental conditions through several actions. It helps to start a violent action in the body. For example, 1. Increasing the rate of heartbeat and breathing. 2. 
dilating the pupils of the eye, 3. Stimulating the sweat glands, 4. Reducing various secretions as saliva, digestive juices, etc. 5. Relaxes the bladder and contracts the rectum. Parasympathetic system The parasympathetic system controls the maintenance activities and helps to conserve the body's energy. The system protects the body from damage by regulating the physiological activities. It brings the body back to normal after the violent activity. For example, 1. Slowing down the heartbeat and breathing rate. 2. Contracting the pupils of the eye. 3. Stimulates gallbladder, contract the bladder and relaxes the rectum. 4. Stimulates salivations and digestive activity. The sympathetic system and parasympathetic system counteract each other. Generally, the parasympathetic nervous system acts to retard or depress functions while the sympathetic nervous system acts to accelerate them. Stimulus and Response When a friend pricks a pin in your hand, you suddenly pull your hand. Sometimes you feel hungry and rush towards food. The internal and external change that encourages an activity or a process in an organism is called stimulus. These stimuli are identified by our sense organs. In the above mentioned examples, pricking of pin and hunger are the stimuli. Stimuli are of two types. 1. External stimulus. It may be due to heat, cold, pain, rain, smell and touch, etc. 2. Internal stimulus. Hunger, thirst, fatigue, etc. On getting stimulated, the reaction shown by the organism or any part of its body is called response. In the above mentioned examples, pulling of hand and rushing towards food are the responses to stimuli. Voluntary and Reflex Action Our body performs a number of activities day and night. Some of the activities are controlled by brain and some are under the control of spinal cord. The nerves help us to send the message either to the brain or spinal cord. Brain or spinal cord accordingly reciprocate and send the message to the different organs of the body and the muscles to act. There are certain actions which are controlled by the brain and are called voluntary actions. For example, writing, running, dancing etc. are voluntary actions. The voluntary actions are slow. There are many actions which are performed automatically and are involuntary and are controlled by the spinal cord which are called reflex actions. These actions are performed only due to some external stimulus. For example, when a finger burns you suddenly withdraw the finger. The spinal cord stimulates the nerve to supply the message to withdraw the finger. Reflex actions are very fast and protective in nature. The path through which an impulse runs in a reflex action is called reflex arc. This includes sensory nerve, intermediate nerve and motor nerve. Here, the brain is not involved. Stimulus is received by a receptor. An impulse travels through sensory nerve to spinal cord. An impulse then passes through the intermediate nerve to a motor nerve ultimately to the muscle or finger. The muscle is called effectors. Now, the muscle contracts and finger is withdrawn. Reflex responses are of two types. 1. Unconditioned reflex. It is an automatic response without any precondition and is called unconditioned reflex. It is also called inborn reflex. For example, as you know, on pricking the pin, you automatically pull your hand. It is not being told to you, but it happens automatically. 2. Conditioned Reflex Certain stimulus, which living organisms have to learn how to respond by experience, are called 
conditioned reflex. For example, when you call your pet by name, it comes and listens to your command. Your pet has learnt this by experience. 